to board the plane before we take off? <laughs> Alrighty. Good afternoon, Ludwigsburg. Welcome to everybody to EclipseCon Europe 2019. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Mike Milinkovic, and I have the great honor to be the executive director um, of the Eclipse Foundation. And it's um, my great pleasure to welcome everybody here for, according to Anne, the 14th Eclipse event in the Stuttgart area. Um, and uh, we've been, uh, been, you know, had a lot of great uh, memories over the, over the years um, at this location and our first one uh, over in Esslingen back in 2006. Um, and I always like to start this event off with a, a little, um, little exercise. So please stand up if you have been to 12 or more EclipseCon Europe's. <laughs> All right, now stay standing. Okay, now stay standing. All right, so 11, up. No, stay standing. Uh, 10, if you've been to 10 or more. Oh, hey, Jan, how's it going? Um, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two. Awesome. All right, now sit down. <laughs> All right, now please stand up if this is your very first EclipseCon. <laughs> And really, it's always nice to recognize the people that um, are repeat customers, but it's also a lot of fun to recognize the people that are, um, that are here for their first time. And say, I say the same thing every year, which is that this is your first EclipseCon, you know, a very warm welcome, and please use this as an opportunity to talk to people and really engage with the community. The wonderful thing about EclipseCon and the Eclipse community is that sense of community. Um, that we have here, and it's, it's actually, um, this event is, is my favorite week of the year because it's an opportunity to get to meet so many new people, but also, um, uh, you know, reaffirm friendships that I've had for many years uh, in the Eclipse community, and uh, so I really encourage everybody who's, if this is your first time, please don't be shy. Um, the Eclipse community is very welcoming. There's, you know, everybody here is very proud of the projects that they work on and, and what they're bringing um, to the industry and to the open source community. And so if you want to talk to somebody about what it is that they're doing and what technology they're building, um, this is your opportunity. And, and it's really the, the hallway track and the opportunity to meet and speak with people is the reason why we climb into airplanes or climb into trains and come to events like this. So, you know, please take advantage of, of your opportunity to meet people and build those relationships. So, all that said, Welcome and thank you. I, I want to call out a special thank you to our sponsors. Um, it's important to understand that it is literally impossible for us to run an event like this without the support of our sponsors. So thank you very much um, to all the companies um, that stepped up to support uh, our event here. Can I please have a round of applause for the sponsors? And of course, you know, it's impossible to do an event like this without a very active and, and a volunteer uh, program committee. You know, all of these folks spent many hours um, looking through the, the many proposals that we had. I think if my memory serves me correctly, we had a new record for the number of proposals. Um, you know, obviously EclipseCon is an event that uh, speakers really want to come and, and talk at, and uh, we've had uh, great fortune to have all of these folks. Um, Torquil Reisheim is the, the, the program chair this year. Um, he's also uh, an elected member of the Board of Directors. Um, he's a pillar of our community. And if you come to the closing session, we'll have a, an, you know, sort of an additional introduction to the, to the program committee. But once again, please, a, a round of applause for the, for the folks who did so much work for this. And again, we had the, the Project Quality Day. Uh, 
How did it go this morning? Good? Who's that? It was this morning, right? Everybody look. It's tomorrow. Oh, okay. So the sign that I walked by at the FMZ was just like for tomorrow. Okay, never mind. But again, thanks so much for the folks that organized our Project Quality Day. Um, this is something I've been doing for quite a few years now, um, and it's been a real, a real success. Um, if you haven't already, please download the uh, the conference app. And um, really, uh, for the really uh, want to shout out for Eclipse Source and their Tabris framework for all the work they put in in enabling the uh, the conference app. So if you don't already have it installed on your phone, um, please go to your favorite app store and, and get it downloaded. As you are here this week, um, please uh, you know tweet about the talks and uh, the, the, the event. Uh, the main um, handle is at EclipseCon. The, the hashtag is, at, uh, is EclipseCon or EclipseCon19. So please share with the broader community what you're what you're uh, liking about the event, and and uh, let us know if there's something that we can do to we can do better to, to help you out. A special shout out this year to our Eclipse committers. Um, so actually, just wave your hand if you are an Eclipse committer on at least one project. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming. I, I really hope you enjoy the week. Um, there is a special gift for you this year um, if you're an Eclipse committer. So please drop by the registration booth. Um, and pick up your, uh, your little piece of uh, um, Eclipse Foundation swag, and, and we really appreciate all the, the efforts that you put into, uh, into supporting the Eclipse technology. And uh, this is the 20th uh, birthday anniversary of the OSGI Alliance, um, who's our partners in organizing this event. And uh, so a special welcome and thank you for those that are uh, attending here for the OSGI community event, and just want to invite up uh, Dan for a quick hello. Well, I just want to thank Mike and his whole team for having us. This is our seventh year here. We haven't been here quite as long as EclipseCon has, but uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoy all the sessions, but uh, we, we do have tracks for OSGI technology, so uh, we'd love to see you there if that's your choice for the day. Thanks again for coming, and thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right, so what's happening today? Um, besides this glorious keynote, of course, um, there's a, a stuff happening all day. This evening at 1735, there's a uh, Stamptish. Uh, there's a, at 630, there's a Pitch Your Project event. Uh, and then at 730, there's a number of different, uh, different choices that you have um, if you uh, uh, want to go late into the evening. Uh, and so there's an edge computing mini hackathon, uh, which I think is going to be really cool for folks who want to work on that stuff. Eclipse Night School, Birds of a Feather, and, um, and then the cloud, the cloud native uh, Java Town Hall, um, where I think I'm the, um, uh, one of the guests and speakers, so I'm looking forward to that uh, this evening. And then tomorrow, um, so bright and early, 8.15, we have our annual Eclipse members meeting. Um, so if, if you're an Eclipse Foundation member, and by the way, if you are a committer, you are a member too, um, you know, please drop by and learn more about uh, what's going on in Eclipse. Uh, yesterday at the board meeting, uh, we passed, uh, we approved a new version of the IP policy, which is going to actually have uh, significant positive impact on our projects in terms of reducing the amount of workflow related to IP management, so we're pretty excited about that. And we also uh, did some updates to our, to our bylaws, and uh, so we're going to have a chat about that as well. Um, so these are, these are pretty big things in, in the governance of our community, um, and so please take the opportunity to come and uh, learn about them. From noon to 5.30, there's the IoT Playground. Then in the, uh, in the evening, there's the Exhibitors Reception. That uh, translates to free beer and nibblies while you talk to exhibitors. Um, so please, uh, please come and enjoy. Um, then in the evening, we have uh, an evening event, Magic Moments. Um, so uh, we'll uh, give you an opportunity to, to be amused in the evening. And then um, in the evening, we have, uh, once again, our, our game time. Um, is it foosball again this year, Ann? Yeah, foosball. Um, foosball and darts. All right, so you have sharp, pointy objects. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, other ways to amuse yourself. Um, in particular, if you are a speaker, and by the way, I might as well, since I'm doing this a lot today, uh, wave if you're a speaker. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we obviously couldn't do it without you. 
Um, on the other hand, now you have extra homework. Um, so we are recording the talks, and we definitely would like everybody to take a few moments and go visit the, uh, the talk preparation room near seminar room one um, over on the other side uh, to make sure that your laptop is all ready to go to have your talk properly recorded when you're delivering it. Um, and uh, the talks are going to be uh, put up, pushed out onto our YouTube channel. Um, there's almost 16,000 subscribers, and, and so an opportunity to, to raise even more awareness um, for the talks that you do here. Um, again, uh, my annual reminder that the Eclipse community does have a code of conduct, and uh, the Foundation does enforce the code of conduct. So when you're at EclipseCon Europe, please be nice to everybody. Um, th that goes without saying, but just your, 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 your usual annual reminder. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. Um, so please, when you go to a talk, uh, take a moment and uh, provide the speaker with some feedback. Um, so in the conference app, there's a way to uh, recognize uh, or you know, re record your opinion of the talk, so please do that. And with that, um, I'm now going to switch to talking a little bit about the state of the union um, of the Eclipse community and the Eclipse Foundation. Um, and uh, I think that isn't the American tradition to start off with saying something and, and the union is strong? Is that, is that how it starts? Something, yeah, so things, are, things are, are, are doing quite well, but I just wanted to sort of give everybody an update on, on what's, what's new and interesting from our perspective at the foundation. Um, so the first piece of big news is we have two new strategic members. Um, so uh, Huawei and Conduit um, just joined our um, board of directors as strategic developer members. So just as a reminder, a strategic developer member is somebody who leads a project at Eclipse and um, who puts in at least eight developers into Eclipse projects. Um, so in addition to monetary contributions that vary depending on the size of the company, uh, strategic developer members are the members that are making big commitments to the Eclipse community in terms of um, contributions and resources to help move our technology forward. So the first one is, is Huawei. Um, so Huawei has been very active in the uh, broader open source ecosystem for many years. They're a, a platinum member at OpenStack, they're a platinum member in the Linux Foundation and a number of the Linux Foundation initiatives, including uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation and OpenNFV. Um, so, there's a, uh, so they've been very active within the uh, broader um, open source community and they've um, this, you know, decided to join the Eclipse community at the strategic level as well. Um, they've recently announced um, and their, their intent to move a lot more um, open source code into the broader open source ecosystem. And I think this is a very exciting move by Huawei. And if you're interested in learning more, please go to, uh, to Brian Che's session um, Thursday um, at 10.15 a.m. if you want to learn more about um, what these uh, logos mean in terms of technology and what their plans are for contributing to the Eclipse Foundation. And in Conduit, um, you know, for those who may remember a couple of years ago, I was uh, on stage right here talking about a project called Eclipse Deep Learning for J. Uh, and Conduit is the company that is continuing to support and, and move forward with Deep Learning for J. And uh, this is a, they're, uh, they're joining the board to make sure that uh, the interests of the emerging AI and machine learning community at the Eclipse Foundation um, is represented, uh, represented at the board of directors. Um, so if you just humor me for a second, I'd like to invite uh, Adam Gibson of Conduit and Brian Che of Huawei up to the stage for a, a handshake and an introduction so you can uh, see, uh, put a face to a name. How's that for a shameless photo op? <laughs> so, but uh, seriously, uh, welcome and thank you both uh, Adam and Brian, really appreciate the support. Um, in terms of, you know, where we focus our energies uh, at the Eclipse Foundation, um, you know, we're at something around 375 projects at the Eclipse Foundation now. And of course, um, as the executive director, I love all of them equally. Um, however, it's a simple fact of the matter, if you try to focus on 375 things, you focus on nothing. Um, so where are we sort of focusing our energies um, at the Eclipse Foundation? Um, 
and by the way, it does, if, you, if you don't fall into one of these neat categories, it doesn't mean we won't help you, it doesn't mean we don't like you, it just means that you're gonna have to actually come and track us down and ask for, ask for help. But the four main areas that uh, we're focusing our energies on these days is cloud-native Java, IoT and Edge, um, automotive, and tools. Um, so those are the, when we think of, you know, uh, when we go and prioritize our days at the Eclipse Foundation, we're probably um, focusing on one of these areas. And in, in the topic of cloud-native Java, one thing that we're particularly proud of is that we just finally, finally, um, released Jakarta EE8. This is something that we've been working towards for almost two years, and it's a promise that was made um, back at Java 1 in 2017 when Oracle announced that they were moving Java EE to the Eclipse Foundation. And, and the, the Jakarta EE community actually won a Duke Award from, um, from Oracle back in, uh, at Code 1 a couple of weeks ago. So we delivered full compatibility with Java EE8 a, with a whole new set of open specifications under a much more liberal licensing regime than what was available under the JCP. We open sourced uh, the TCKs under an, uh, and uh, made those available. So now, um, you know, when you, uh, when you want to interact with, uh, with the Jakarta EE community, you know, actually delivering additional tests to, to move qual the definition of quality forward is an option that's available to you. We came right out the gate with a number of compatible implementations, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And we have a fully transparent uh, branding process um, and uh, complete parity with, with Java EE8. And we're very happy and pleased that we already have four um, implementations which are um, completely compatible with the Jakarta EE8 spec specifications. So Eclipse Glassfish, um, Open Liberty, Pyera Server, and Wildfly are all certified as Jakarta EE8 compatible. And uh, that's, that's definitely something that we're very pleased with. And we're very focused on recruiting new projects at Eclipse uh, that are focused on cloud-native technologies. You know, Jetty and Vertex have been at the Eclipse Foundation for quite a while. Eclipse J is a very interesting um, uh, new tooling platform that we'll talk about in a second, and of course, Glassfish as well. Then on the developer tool side, um, you know, the Eclipse IDE was the beginning of everything at the Eclipse Foundation. That's where we got our name. That's what, uh, you know, created the foundation 15 years ago. Um, and it continues to move forward now with quarterly or quarter, quarterly release cycle, um, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then Che and Thea are two new, very uh, cool and interesting tooling platforms um, for that are based on modern web technologies um, that are also getting a lot of attention in the industry. And so the Eclipse IDE, uh, the D Eclipse Desktop IDE, is again it's been around since 2001, so it's like 18, 19 years old. Um, but it's still, it is used by millions of developers every year, and we're actually seeing uh, something like 25% uh, growth in downloads um, year over year, um, and largely because the team has been working extremely hard on making the Eclipse IDE even better than it was. So more language support, better performance, better uh, proven extensibility. Uh, now that Java is shipping every six months, uh, the IDE team is, is keeping up with that, so we're much more current in terms of the Java platform releases, LSP, and then, of course, the quarterly re release cycle. These are all things that are driving increased adoption of the IDE. And I want to have a special uh, shout-out to uh, Sofit, um, who's been tirelessly supporting the, uh, the recognition um, in the community of the Eclipse IDE through his uh, Eclipse Java IDE Twitter feed. Um, he's done a wonderful job um, raising awareness of all of the great capabilities of the Eclipse IDE. And I really, um, are you here, Sophie? Of course not. <laughs> he's busy tweeting somewhere. Uh, <laughs> But if you see him, uh, please tell him that Mike did a shout out and uh, it, it's, uh, he's done a wonderful job uh, on behalf of our community. And then moving forward, Eclipse Thea just got picked up and is now uh, uh, launched as the, um, the new IDE for the Arduino community. So the, I, the, the IDE, uh, the pro IDE for Arduino. For anybody who knows about IoT and the hobbyist and maker community, Arduino is a very big deal. Um, and so we're really happy about that. And then Eclipse Che shipped uh, last, uh, Che 7 shipped last month, um, building a strong link with the Kubernetes community and providing tools for Kubernetes. And so that's been uh, something that's gotten a lot of recognition and press um, just uh, over the last couple of weeks. 
On the automotive side, um, it's too bad Ralph couldn't join us here. Because he's, on, he's actually meeting with some automotive companies. Um, but, uh, you know, they have, uh, we've seen three new uh, working groups start up in the automotive sector in the last couple of months. So Open Mobility, um, Open Genesis, and Open ADX are all recent and new additions to our portfolio of working groups. Um, and they're mostly involved in and around the connected car uh, ecosystem. So building out uh, infrastructure for um, supporting connected cars. Open ADX in particular is about building tool chains for building autonomous driving systems, um, which is a very important challenge ahead for the, uh, for the automotive industry. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff that is happening in, in that sector. Then on IoT and Edge, um, so the IoT working group has just got a shiny new logo. Um, so we're sort of um, changing the color scheme a little bit. We're refreshing the website. Um, so it's, uh, you know, helping uh, polish that a little bit more. Um, and uh, the edge computing community at the Eclipse Foundation with IOFOG and, and FOG OS as two projects are, are really starting to take off and we're in the process of standing up an edge working group as well. In, within the Eclipse IoT community, um, one of the, I think, exciting developments is this new packaging project that was uh, proposed by, uh, by Jens Ryman to uh, put together uh, helm charts uh, for the, uh, the pr some of the projects that, uh, that really should be combined with one another to provide a better out-of-box experience. So we feel that this, this work in the packaging side of the Eclipse IoT projects is going to do a lot for, in terms of making it easier for um, new people to get uh, started with Eclipse IoT technologies. So in introducing the IoT packages project, it's really about the uh, delivering helm charts um, that pull together some of these building blocks, and that's going to be um, a way, a much simpler way for developers to get started with this technology portfolio. So one of the other things that's quite exciting is we've had, um, how can I put this, uh, there have been recent events in the world that have uh, generated many questions to the Eclipse Foundation from both our members and our projects about, um, could we host projects in Europe? Um, I'll leave it to your imagination why people might ask that question. But um, so one of the things that we're experimenting with is standing up a GitLab infrastructure um, on servers physically located in Europe. Uh, so this is something that we hope to have up and running, um, certainly by the first quarter of uh, next year. We're going to have uh, some prototypes running this, uh, this by the end, by before the end of the year. Uh, but, you know, hopefully by, um, you know, uh, say March or so, if you, if you have a project and you'd like to have it uh, try out GitLab um, as, a, as the, your forge of choice, um, that's something that we're going to be able to offer you. And with that, I hope I'm more or less on time. Oh, a few minutes early, but I always talk fast. <laughs> so um, it's my uh, great pleasure to uh, introduce the, the actual keynote um, for today's session. And um, the talk is on Comprehensive Digital Twin, Enabler for Model-Based Systems Engineering by Jan Luridon, who is um, at Siemens PLM Software, but he's been an entrepreneur in the past. Um, he's got his PhD from the uh, University um, of Cincinnati, is that correct? Thank you. And um, and did a startup that was a spin, basically a spin out of the University of Leuven that was acquired by Siemens. Um, so and has uh, been a big part of their PLM tooling strategy. And without further ado, Jan, please come up and thank you so much.